Today we begin a new summer worship series focusing on the wonderful stories of our beginning in the first book of the Bible, Genesis. So today we hear about Abraham and Sarah, which takes us to the beginning of our adventure as God's people. Now, three of the world's major religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, all trace back to Abraham and Sarah. But first, they aren't known quite yet as Abraham and Sarah. They are Abram and Sarai. So hear these words. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife, Sarai, and his brother's son, Lot, and all the possessions that they had gathered, and the persons whom they had acquired in Haran. And they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, to the oak of Morah. At the time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. From there he moved on to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he built an, alt an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on by stages toward the Negev. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So with all great stories, it starts at the beginning. And this story, the beginning, it goes a long back ways. <laughs> so when God created the earth and the sun and the moon and the stars and the water and the fish and the animals and just everything, God said, it's good. But when God created man and placed him in the Garden of Eden to care for it, God said, mm, it's not good. That is, it's not finished, it's not complete. It's not good for the man to be alone. I'll make a companion, a helper for him, someone to complete him, someone to help him do what he otherwise couldn't do on his own. And what we know is that together, then, they reflect or mirror the image of God. So, God fashioned Eve to be suitable for Adam and presented her to him. Now, Adam, a Adam he'd been out in the garden and uh, probably out there naming uh, all the animals, right? So he's like, uh, mongoose, that'll be a yak. Hmm, another yak, right? You know, <laughs> and then all of a sudden in the midst of that boringness, God brings Eve and presents her in all her glory to Adam. And Adam says, whoa, man, right? right? He sees you and goes, whoa, man, whoa, man, whoa, man, woman, woman, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The Bible says, Adam exclaimed, at last, she is part of my own flesh and bone. She will be called woman, but you know, I know. This is before they were covered up uh, with fig leaves. So Adam looked at her and was like, Oh, man! <laughs> See, we humans, were made for relationship with one another. But we were created in God's image and first made for relationship with God. With God and with humans. We see that uh, not long after God created the first man and woman, it says that God would come and walk in the cool of the evening with Adam and Eve. It's a really wonderful moment in, in Genesis. And, and of course, in the moment in, in the story, it was beautiful. The paradise of creation, an unbelievably awesome garden of profound 
beauty with animals and trees and water features like, you know, pools and waterfalls. And, and then the man and the woman got to spend time with God, the creator. The creator so powerful, so cosmic, so awesome. The God who created the entire universe. But then that same God who wanted to be in relationship in deep, intimate relationship with the human beings that God made. So God came and walked in the cool of the evenings with them. You know, I always think if, if there were cars uh, back then, they might have piled into a, 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 a convertible, put the top down, and you know, put some music on and taken a, a drive with the, the cool breeze in their hair. It was paradise. The Garden of Eden, the creation. But it didn't last. The paradise was lost. You know, there was that serpent, that snake, that just kept saying, is that what God really said? I don't think that's right. And the man and the woman were led astray. They didn't, they didn't stay close to God. They chose a different way. They thought they knew better than God. And the man and the woman, they lost the paradise that they had had. And as the story goes on, you know, the things just went from bad to worse out in the world. As humans began to multiply, they became evil. And people even started killing one another. And God was heartbroken. And the text tells us that the, the Lord regretted even making human beings. And God knew something had to happen. So God had to, something had to be done, right? God wanted to repair the brokenness and, and bring about the goodness, the harmony, the peace, the wholeness and completeness of the original, the original creation, that paradise. So God God tried. God tried to repair the relationship. So the first thing God decided was to just wipe them out. Wipe out all the humans and start over. So God sent a flood that covered the entire earth and everyone died. Everyone drowned except for one family. Noah was preser preserved by God. God preserved Noah and his family uh, with a plan to start over fresh from there. And then God put that rainbow in the sky and said, this is the symbol, this rainbow. This is the symbol that proclaims that I will never use violence to destroy humans again. It was a fresh start, but that fresh start, it didn't it didn't last either. It turned out that humans were just as wicked as before the flood. Violence couldn't stop the violence. Something had to be done. And now, now here the story starts to narrow down. From the cosmic creation... <laughs> all the way down to one person and one family. So after the flood, nations descended from Noah. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Their clans and languages, their lands, as nations, they, they all arose. And after several generations, a list of Shem's descendant led to Terah. Tira, who became the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. But Haran, one of those three sons, Haran died early in the land of his, of his birth, Ur, uh, leaving a son, Lot. Abram, he got married and took Sarai as his wife. She was barren and had no child. And that's what the text says Sarah was unable to have children. And this little, this little fact 
right there in the text, will drive the story that we're going into for the next 10 chapters, literally 20% of this story of Genesis, from this one fact, she was unable to have children. Then Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, his daughter-in-law Sarah, and they left Ur to move into the land of Canaan. But on the way, they came to a city called Haran, Uh, a city in today's southeastern Turkey. This is east of of Canaan. And when they arrived there, they stopped and they settled there. And they stayed there. And that's where Terah died. That's also where Abram received his call, still there in the land of Ur. Something had to be done, and God was setting it into motion. See, God decided to set apart a group of people uh, to show the way, to show the way, to be an, uh, an example to the rest of the world, to the rest of creation, to show the world what it means to, to be the world that God intended in creation, to show the rest of the world that the way of the world is not the only way and certainly not the true way to live. And so this pivotal text that we uh, read says in Genesis 12, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed." This is a call story. God called Abram and Sarai to live their home, their country, their people, and journey to a land where God would then show them. God promised to make Abram and Sarai uh, into a great nation and to bless them and to bless all the people on earth through them. Their family was to be a blessing to the entire world, the the whole world. So this was just a radical call. If you think about this at the time, Abram was 75 years old and and Sarai was 65 and they were childless. Remember, She she was barren. Sarai, she was unable to have children. Still, Abram was called to leave everything that he knew for a long and an uncertain journey to a mysterious destination. But God God promised to make Abram into a great nation to bless him and to bless all the people on earth through him. So Abram and Sarai had one function in the plan of God, to be a blessing. To be a blessing to all the families of the ground. The ground. See, the biblical translations Translations typically render uh, this verse as the families of the earth or perhaps the peoples of the earth. In other words, Abram and Sarai are to bless all the families of the earth. But that translation obscures a crucial concern for the story. See, in the beginning, and I do mean in the beginning, All human beings are created from dust of the ground. It is the ground to which all life will return in death. And that's what we hear in the the book of Genesis, in the beginning of the story. And this is what we come back to every year in our Christian year, right at the very beginning of Lent, when we come to Ash Wednesday, and uh, we sort of, smear some ashes on us in the cross, right? And we say, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. That's what we say every year. We come from the ground, and we will return to the ground. And that's actually what it says in this text in Genesis. Therefore, when Abram is called to be a blessing to all the families of the ground, and that's what it is, the 
the, the families of the ground, we hear the call of Abram and Sarai for what it really is, a new attempt on the part of God to recon reconstitute the harmony of the creation. This really is a missionary call for Abram and Sarai and their family and the nation of Israel and the people of Jesus who are grafted into God's people. Something had to be done. Something had to be done. After the paradise of creation was lost, after humans went from bad to worse, when the fresh start after the flood led right back to humans being just as wicked as previously, something had to be done. So God set apart a group of people to show the way, to be an example to the rest of the world, to show the world what it means to be the world that God intended in creation, to show the rest of, of the world that the way of the world is not the only way and certainly not the true way to live. Our story, the beginning of our story, has begun with Abram and Sarai. Remember, though, this story narrows down from the cosmic creation, all that hugeness, all the way down to one person, down to one family. But let's be clear about this. Abram and Sarai weren't special because they were somehow deserving or gifted. I mean, they weren't even particularly suited to do uh, for what God uh, was calling. I mean, at this point, they were childless. It's hard to become to, uh, well, to, to become a family and to grow into a larger family and to grow into a nation and all that when you don't even have a child yet. See, they were special, not because of them. They were special because of God's grace. Because of God's grace, God chose them and their family and, by extension, us today. It wasn't about them and how wonderful they are. It's about God and what God did and what God is doing. It's not because they were so special. God, God chose them. It's about God. And we're going to see in this story coming at us now, how this one person, this one family, struggles over and over and over. And there are, there are a lot of moments where they do not look, they don't look too great. But they had this. This is what they had. Abram, and Sarai obeyed when God called because they had faith. They participated in what God is doing because they had faith. This isn't about how great they are or how gifted or how special. This was because they had faith. That's it. They had faith. And that's good news for us, for you and for me because it's not about how special or how gifted or how deserving that we are. It's, it's always about God and what God is doing. God set apart a group of people to show the way, to be an example to the rest of the world, to show, to show the world what it means to be the world that God intended originally in creation, to show the rest of the world that the, the way of the world is not the only way. And certainly not the true way to live. The only thing that we need is faith. Do you have faith? Let's take a moment in silence and listen for God's voice in our midst. <laughs> 